Good morning. It's Monday morning. Um, we're going to finish Acts today. We're going to read verses 17 through 31 in chapter 28, and we'll be done with it. Paul finally gets to Rome. He's in Rome, and it says, After three days he called together the local leaders of the Jews. And when they'd gathered, he said to them, Brothers, though I had done nothing against our people or the customs of our fathers, yet I was delivered as a prisoner from Jerusalem into the hands of the Romans. When they had examined me, they wished to set me at liberty because there was no reason for the death penalty in my case. But because the Jews objected, I was compelled to appeal to Caesar, though I had no charge to bring against my nation. For this reason, then, I have asked to see you and speak with you, since it is because of the hope of Israel that I am wearing this chain. And they said to him, We have received no letters from Judea about you, and none of the brothers coming here has reported or spoken any evil against you. But we desire to hear from you what your views are, for with regard to this sect, we know that everywhere it's spoken against. When they had appointed a day for him, they came to him at his lodging in greater numbers. From morning till evening, he expounded to them, testifying to the kingdom of God and trying to convince them about Jesus, both from the law of Moses and from the prophets. And some were convinced by what he said, but others disbelieved. And disagreeing among themselves, they departed after Paul made one statement. The Holy Spirit was right in saying to your fathers through Isaiah the prophet, quote, Go to this people and say, You will hear, but never understand, and you will indeed see, but never perceive. For this people's heart has grown dull, and with their ears they can barely hear, and their eyes have closed, lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart, and turn, and I would heal them. Therefore, let it be known to you that this salvation of God has been sent to the Gentiles. They will listen. He lived there two whole years at his own expense and welcomed all who came to him, proclaiming the kingdom of God and teaching about the Lord Jesus Christ with all boldness and without hindrance. So Paul makes one last in this book, last uh, argument in front of the Jews in Rome about his uh, belief in Jesus as the Messiah and the hope of Israel. Most of them don't believe him. Well, think about yourself. Would you have believed somebody who taught something so radically new and different that that upended your understanding of your own faith? I'm not sure most of us would be in the Christian camp on that. We'd be sitting over there going, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. So um, that's how it is with Paul. Now, it's interesting, Luke ends the book right there. Paul is, you know, living in his house at his own expense, which means that um, the Romans aren't footing the bill for any of this. He's living there, and he's he's kind of on house arrest, and and that's where he is for two whole years, it says. Um, uh, Then what? Now, there's a strong tradition in Spain— that Paul came to Spain. And there's some speculation that he was released from arrest and went to Spain and then came back to Rome, perhaps went further east and then back to Rome a third time. Um, There's a tradition that he died in Rome, which I think we have to take seriously. And the usual uh, thought among our Uh, earlier generations was, well, he got to Rome about 62, and two years later, about 64, is when Nero started killing Christians, and so he was just part of that um, effort, and he died. Uh, Not everybody believes that Nero is the one who killed Paul, and not everybody believes that this is the end of the story. Some people even say, well, he went to Rome, he went to Spain, then back to Rome, and then to Jerusalem again. I'm not sure about that part of it, but um, he did seem to do some traveling around that's not accounted for in um, Luke's book of Acts. And we don't know then the way Luke has structured Acts if it's meant to simply tell a certain theological story as so many of the 
books in the New Testament are, or if it's really meant to be a history. And if it is a history, then it seems to stop short and we don't have a couple of the final questions answered. And it may be that Luke wasn't around and doesn't know. Well, for us, um, I guess one thing that comes to mind is that, you know, the story's never over. We don't know the end of the story. We don't know everything that's going to happen to us. And we don't know um, what opportunities or challenges we may have in the future. So we have to just remain open to the future and see what comes. And if we can do that, um, Christ will go with us. God will be with us and we will be, um, well, we'll be just fine. But think about your future and think about that. And, you know, life is not over wherever you are. It's, this is not the end of it. This is just where you are right now. And that's what we have said to Paul. He's, yeah, you're under house arrest for two years. Now what are you going to do? He'd have thought of something. And I think we can think of something too. Have a great day.